All right, good, after, uh, good afternoon. Um, so uh, I, I hope we've got the pointer difficulty resolved. But anyway, um, uh, great to be here. Uh, I'm very excited uh, to be here at Open Compute this year. And for those of you that I have not had a chance to meet yet, uh, my name is Scott Ayler. Um, I am Corporate Vice President and General Manager of the Enterprise Solutions business at AMD. Uh, and I'm really excited uh, to be with you here today to talk a little bit about um, AMD in Naples and how we think that that's going to provide a very interesting, disruptive, and open future uh, for the data center. So a very exciting time at AMD, right? I think uh, probably a lot of you have seen uh, there has been no shortage of, uh, of press, uh, no shortage of expectation, uh, no shortage of, of buzz around what's been going on at AMD lately. So it's really a, a great time, a great time to be at AMD. And really what is at the heart of that is uh, we've really made a very strong commitment uh, that started about three and a half years ago uh, that we were going to get back into the high-performance computing x86 space. Um, and the reason why it's taken half, three and a half years was because that's how long it takes to develop a high-performance x86 core. So um, over the past couple of weeks, uh, you've started to see and read and have people experience uh, what Zen is all about. In its first instantiation, uh, which is in our Ryzen 7 product uh, that we actually launched two weeks ago uh, in San Francisco. Uh, and, and I'm happy to say that that has been uh, a very strong start uh, and a very strong kind of initial success of Zen in the market. But um, what we want to talk about is, you know, what was Zen really built for, right? Um, Zen was really built around how do we think about providing the high performance capability that's needed in x86 that will really power uh, the next generation data center. So um, why is that so important uh, to AMD and why is that so important to us? Uh, really, it's because you know the data center is so important, not only to us as an industry, but also kind of to society. So when you think about all the innovation that's gone in uh, to, to the software workloads and the different things that power the data center, data center is at the core and, and servers are at the core of so much of what it is we do. Think about your trip here. Uh, you, you might have been able to kind of get your boarding pass online and and, and the days of kind of printing tickets is over. Uh, think about, um, you know, for example, if you, if you got to the airport and you had a bit of time to kill, you might have uh, done a bit of binge watching on your, on your Breaking Bad episodes via Netflix. Um, you know, think about, you know, the, the, the entertainment experience that you had on the airplane. The fact that, you know, uh, airplanes are becoming more and more efficient through navigation systems that all run on data centers. Um, as you got here, you know, probably your ability to leverage navigation devices and, and Google Maps or Apple Maps uh, to find your way here, and that's all connected via high-performance 4G LTE network. These are all things that have data center at the core. Um, and really, when you look at what it, where a lot of the innovation has been on the data center, it's really, really kind of from a software perspective. If you think about the advent of things like NFV, SDN, um, where 5G is headed, the advent of things like containers that allow for kind of microservices to be developed, right? Data center, uh, data centers touch everything it is we do, and really, there's been a pretty tremendous innovation. But really, that's primarily been on the software side. Um, you know, when you look at what the backbone and the heart of, of our data centers today, it's really the 2P rack mount server. Um, yes, there are other different form factors. There's blades. There's hyperconverged. Uh, but really, this is the vast majority of what the market is today. And when you peel the onion on what's in uh, an x86 uh, data center two socket server, is it's really all built around 64-bit x86. Uh, over 95% of the servers today in the world are built around x86, and all of those are 64-bit. It's also built around multi-core. Think about how core counts have really exploded, right? Because it's getting more and more to get, it's getting more and more difficult to chase that last gigahertz, that last megahertz. So really, the industry's gotten very pervasive and, and capable around multi-core processing. To scale out, you've got to have the ability to have multiple, uh, multiple CPUs talking to each other coherently. Right, through, through some type of coherent interconnect. Um, the vast majority of the workloads today are built around virtualization. This allows you to take and abstract very large compute engines in either to large or small form factors or sizes. But when you do that, you've got to make sure that you don't pay, pay a huge performance penalty. You've got to make sure that you have very low latency, very high performance uh, virtualization capability. And you've got to be able to have the, the capability to really feed these things. It's not enough to have a high performance core. You've got to make sure that you can feed them 
uh, with very strong capability via industry-leading technologies and DRAMs. You know, what's interesting, when we presented all of those things that are needed in the data center, they're actually all things that started with AMD innovation. So the first 64-bit x86 processors and every 64-bit x86 instruction that's run today started with AMD. When you think about the first to multi-core, you think about uh, the first to a high-speed coherent interconnect with coherent, uh, coherent hypertransport. You think about AMDV, the first set of hardware accelerated virtualization instructions, the first to market uh, with integrated memory controllers. All things that really innovate came from AMD innovations back when AMD was in the market. And what's kind of happened is there's been this period of there's been this kind of period where the industry, I think, has been starved for innovation. And I think you see here at the show um, the hunger that is there to drive kind of a new balance, a new equilibrium, an equilibrium in the data center. Um, think about the things in today's workloads, in today's servers, that are, li that are limited by unbalanced designs. Uh, whether you've got kind of too much storage, too, much, too many cores, not enough memory bandwidth. Um, how do we think about a, a completely new approach uh, to, to what, we, uh, what we can do in the data center? This, di this idea of incrementalism, right? Every 18 months, you're going to get 5, 10, 15, maybe if we're lucky, 20% more performance, right? Inching our way to incremental goodness, right? As opposed to really rethinking what is possible when you start with a clean sheet approach. And then how do we think about, again, the advent and, and really kind of onset and the more and more pervasive nature of what's going on with cloud? That is in the public cloud. That is in private clouds. That is the ability to kind of scale and move in and out of those clouds. And I, can't, I think the key thing when we think about coming into the market again as AMD, we want to provide innovation that will create the, the ability for our partners and customers to achieve new levels of system level value um, that, will, that will create this new environment of innovation that the industry is so, has so desperately needed. So I now come to the Nables era, this new era of bringing Zen into the data center. So just a couple of days ago, uh, we actually ha have started to reveal some of the architectural details around Naples. And it all starts with that foundational core investment that we made around Zen. So in every Naples device, uh, in every 1P device that we have, uh, we'll have up to 32 Zen cores. And you probably are saying, man, that's a lot of cores. Are they any good? Are they small and wimpy? Um, well, I'd encourage you to go out and buy a Ryzen. Uh, an experience for yourself. And you can go read, you can go run the benchmarks, you can look at, look at any of the benchmarking sites. And I think you know, we're quite happy with where uh, Zen has landed. And, and I'll have you know that that Zen core is the basis for every Naples device that we will build. So we will have very strong core game. The other thing uh, that's important that we started to talk about is it's not enough to have leadership core performance if you can't feed the beast. So we, we've taken the architectural decision to have a leadership capability and memory bandwidth and capacity. So on every Naples device, we will have eight memory controllers that give you the capability to feed those 32 high performance cores. You know, over 80% of applications today are memory bound. We aim to unlock the capabilities that you're not getting in your data center by having leadership memory bandwidth and leadership memory capacity. So we also, back to the heritage of innovation uh, that is AMD, is we've taken a different approach as it relates to the architecture of the device itself. So if you look at a two socket server today, you'll have a couple of, uh, a couple of CPUs, you'll have an IO hub or a south bridge to connect all the different devices that you want, whether it's storage or uh, graphics cards, you're going to have to add a south bridge. You're going to have to add a PCI Express switch. What we've done at AMD is we've taken the approach by following that, that SOC methodology that AMD has been so strong at to take and integrate all that IO capability onto the device itself. And in doing that, it now allows us the capability to put an unprecedented level of IO uh, on every device. So in every Naples device, we will have 128 lanes of multi, uh, 
configurable, uh, configurable I.O. that can be PCI Express. It can directly attach to SATA. It can directly attach to NVMe. We've got Ethernet muxing capability on board. So think about all the things that you can do with that massive amount of I.O. And again, this is afforded uh, by the capability that we're putting in around this, this philosophy of a system on a chip. So what you see when you look at a Naples is this idea in the de design philosophy that you see that started with Zen. The idea of Zen is with balance. How do we think about the right balance of, of instruction units, of cache, of, of floating point? That actually extends to the system level. So we now have the capability to have a very balanced system where, yes, you have to have high performance cores. And again, we have very strong core game. But you've got to make sure that you feed the beast. You've got to make sure that you manage the east-west traffic um, that is in the system via a very rich set of I.O. So how do you think about taking one Naples and building that two-socket server and rethinking that two-socket server that I showed you before? So uh, what we do is we take that, these, these Naples devices in a two-socket solution. We actually now connect them. Uh, in a two-socket server, we can now achieve 64 cores, 128 threads in, 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 a, single, uh, in a single motherboard, in a single two-socket uh, two rack. Okay? And you know, with that capability, you now have the ability to address four terabytes of memory, um, in, in a two-socket solution. And that's something that, you know, for those of you that, you know, have, have long heritages and histories in four-way and, and even eight-way systems, to get to that level of memory capacity, you have to buy eight and $10,000 uh, CPUs from the competitor to get that level of memory bandwidth. We're now at a point where you can achieve that in mainstream two-socket solutions, okay? Um, the other thing that's worth noting uh, is we also connect this. You may have seen and heard uh, AMD talk a lot about our Infinity Fabric. Uh, the Infinity Fabric that we have has a lot of its origins in the, uh, the heritage of coherent, uh, coherent uh, hypertransport uh, that, again, was an AMD innovation uh, many years ago. So we take those PCI Express physicals, we actually take and leverage that for our coherent uh, protocol, actually, that allows us to have very low latency, very high bandwidth uh, between the devices. So thinking about what you can do with this, is, is also extremely interesting. So when you think about the ability to have leadership, memory bandwidth, and capacity, leveraging very industry standard commodity DIMMs, let's be honest, you guys have all been seeing DRAM prices this year, right? Um, it's very important that you stay in mainstream uh, memory technologies, right? So when you think about that kind of capability, think about the advent and the explosion of in-memory databases, uh, unstructured databases, where you have the capability to now, instead of loading problem sets partially and then having to go to disk, you now have the capability to load those fully in memory. And if you do have to go to disk, you've got direct connect to the NVMe drive uh, via PCI Express. So think about things that you can do in the database. Think about things that you can do leveraging um, all of this I.O. capability, right? Um, leveraging that, whether it's for a connection to a massive amount of storage, right? Think of how many NVMe drives you can connect with a solution like this. Um, think about what you can do um, with you think about the, this level of core and, and, and memory bandwidth and density. You know, think about the VM density. Back to the we're at OCP, uh, thinking about clouds. Um, thinking about hyperscale, think about the VM density that you can achieve with a solution like this. So we really think that with what we're providing is we're now kind of opening and unlocking capabilities um, in the data center that simply have been unattainable from a cost perspective uh, before. So the other thing that, that's interesting to think about is, you know, AMD does more than build CPUs. We're back in that business. Um, we also have a very strong approach as we think about um, our approach to GPU compute and machine learning. So this idea that you can take that leadership capability that we've established with 128 lanes of PCI Express and now couple that with direct connect to uh, our Radeon Instinct cards. And when you do that, you don't need a PLX switch, you don't need a PCI Express switch, you don't need all the cost, power, and latency associated with that. You can directly connect. You have the ability to connect and interact with the GPUs from a full bandwidth perspective. You can also take and, and flip this around and say, think about the VDI solutions that you can build, leveraging our Radeon Pro uh, devices, where we have a very strong hardware accelerated, high quality of service VDI based offering. So you're now thinking about building things 
in one socket solutions that weren't possible before. So when you, when you look at all the speeds and feeds and, and everything that I've shown you is looking at this balanced arch architecture actually provides a very compelling uh, value proposition. So comparing ourselves to the highest performance two socket in the market today, the E5 2699AB4 that cost $5,000, I know I've bought them, um, is, uh, is what is available today, released in October of last year. Um, compared to that device, we have 45% more cores than they do. And again, I would encourage you to go buy Horizon and check out the core for yourself. We have double, over double the memory bandwidth of the competitor in this generation. And, and, and again, to double back on the I.O., we have a very leadership position as it relates to I.O. capability. But make no mistake, we didn't build this to compete with that part. We built this to compete with the future. And we know it's coming and we're ready. So stay tuned, watch the space as, as more things to come as it relates to Naples. Now, what else are we talking about here at OCP? So we are extremely excited uh, to be part of the open compute community and partner with Microsoft in the collaboration and defi definition of Project Olympus. So you, you heard from Kushagra and Leendert and the team this morning um, that Project Olympus is a new way of developing uh, open standards hardware in the industry. Uh, kudos to that team for their foresight in putting a spec out at the end of last year that allowed people to begin to collaborate, partner with industry leaders, both from not only a CP perspective, but also an I.O., power supplies, memory, um, and, and really have the best of breed capability now here six months later. Um, so, you know, looking at what is in a, uh, an AMD Naples-based uh, platform, uh, a lot of the virtues that you see around Olympus with uh, very kind of unique uh, three-phase power supply capability with battery backup, um, looking at a very innovative heat sink methodology to get the maximum performance density in there uh, to be able to cool these things. Um, the other thing that you'll notice, and again, we have these uh, in, in both the Microsoft booth as well as in, uh, as in the AMD booth, is you can notice that actually the, the motherboard is quite Spartan, other than the fact that we have a huge amount of DIMMs. Um, no need for uh, South Bridges, no need for PCI Express, and still delivering all the connectivity that you need for add-on PCI Express expansion, direct connect to SATA and NVMe. So we really think that the Naples platform built, uh, the, the Olympus platform built around Naples um, is going to be very, very interesting um, as it relates to open compute uh, and data centers uh, around the world. So, um, you know, thinking about also how does Naples kind of marry and merge um, with this idea of open compute? You know, AMD has had a long history of, of being open. We don't believe in proprietary standards, um, even though we're forced to comply with them at times. Um, we very much are all about open, whether it was the innovations that I showed around opening up our, our coherency protocols, um, the things that we do from a software ecosystem on the, on the, on the GPU side with things like OpenCL. Um, you know, we have a long history of, of an open uh, approach, and, and we definitely think that what we're doing with Naples very much fits with that. So this idea of a modular and flexible design thinking about what you can do, not only kind of with that Apex Predator platform that we talked about, you know, that kind of two socket, you know, four terabytes of memory thing, we also have, will have capabilities in, the more, in more of the mainstream, right? Because we have very broad flexibility within our stack. Uh, the ability to have, you know, at this point, unprecedented scalability from a core density perspective, um, we think is pretty compelling. Um, that I.O. and all the things that we can do there all will lead to uh, platforms that are very innovative back to this avoiding the, the path that we were on of incrementalism, where everybody had a two sock and it looked a certain way and it was just, you know, how fast was yours versus mine? And, and, and I think, you know, we're now at a point where we are offering very distinct capabilities back to this open approach that will establish a new, uh, a new period of, of, of innovation. So, um, you know, people are probably like, man, when can I get one? Um, so, good, good question. Um, so, uh, you know, we actually, in, in partnership with Microsoft, um, have released the Project Olympus uh, spec with Naples today. 
Um, you have the ability to go see them um, in our booth um, as well as in the Microsoft booth. Uh, and we'd be happy to get under the hood with you and fire one up and show you all the good things that it can do. Um, you know, beyond the platform, what the, what the products can do themselves. And the things that I would say as well is, um, you know, clearly this is probably one of the first things that you're seeing from AMD around a high performance computing platform. And we're extremely pl proud to be part of partnering with Microsoft in, on Project Olympus. But I would say watch this space uh, because, you know, there's a fair amount of activity um, in this space as people really want to, again, break through this, 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 uh, break out of this desert of incrementalism that we've been in. So in closing, um, I wanted to, again, thank you for your time. Um, I think, you know, to summarize, it's, it's a very good time at AMD. Um, we've been very hard at work uh, over the course of the past three and a half years, um, building a lot of the innovation that historically has been kind of our hallmark. We're also very focused from an execution perspective. So we've been public um, that we will be in market uh, in high volume in the second quarter of this year. And you can see from what we've done on the horizon and, and uh, the, uh, the momentum that is there, uh, we've had a good start uh, from a consumer perspective. Um, we're absolutely on track. So um, I would encourage you to come visit us, uh, see us in the booth if you have more questions about Olympus, more questions about Naples. And I think the future is very bright and very open with Naples. Thank you.